Welcome to Tabletop Ready, my name's Michael and in this video tutorial I'm going to be showing you step by step how you can paint ultramarines and have them look like the ones from the box. If you like my content make sure to subscribe and give this video a like, it really helps get my videos out to everyone. Make sure to follow me on Instagram where I post short form tutorials and if you want to share with me and everyone what Warhammer hobby you're working on, go ahead and join the r slash Tabletop Ready subreddit. Whenever I'm putting something together, I always think about whether I want to completely build the miniatures or if I have them in parts to make it easier to paint. For example, this bolter is going to get in the way of me being able to paint parts in the marine, so I'll leave it separate. And after I've decided what parts I want to keep separate, I'll mount them on something to hold on to while painting. Don't worry, I'll drill out the gun barrel as well. Now I know what you're thinking, another Ultramarine tutorial. But I wouldn't be a painting channel unless I had one as well, would I? So let me show you how to paint the best ultramarine you're capable of. Let's get started. First of all, I start with a McCrag Blue Spray Undercoat. I use this because I know the marine is mainly this colour and saves me time working up to McCrag Blue if I was to use a different colour to undercoat. Now the spray isn't a perfect match to the McCrag Blue in the pot and you may have even missed some areas. So using a flat brush I'm going to use some McCrag Blue to go over the armour, making sure I've got a nice solid colour to work with. The next thing I'm going to do is paint all the joints in between the armour. I'm doing this now so I can be messy and not ruin any highlights or shading I may have already done. And I'll just use my crack blue again to neaten up these areas when I'm finished. Now I want to start giving the armour some definition, which basically means defining the details that are there, and I'm going to be using a recess shade for this. A recess shade is a technique used to paint whatever you're using straight into any recess panel lines or detail. For the ultramarine armour I'm using Norn Oil and I find that using a glaze brush really helps as you don't have to worry about overloading your brush and getting it everywhere and it's small enough to get into most details. Now the recessed shade is done I can now show you how to go about highlighting the armour. I really want to go into some detail about highlighting because if you can highlight well then you can paint anything in my opinion. I'm going to go through the multiple stages of highlighting going through the process the Every Metal team goes through to achieve their Ultramarine armour. Before you even start, it's worth having a good quality brush which you can get a nice point with. I would even keep a brush separate just for highlighter miniatures like I do. You then want to think about the consistency of your paint and how much you have on your brush. It does take time to get used to, but just start out with an equal amount of water until you figure out what you prefer. I also like to remove some of the paint on some kitchen paper from the brush. This helps give me more control and prevents thick blubby lines when painting. The first highlight that I'm going to show you is a chunky highlight and I'm using an equal mix of McCrag Blue and Calgar Blue. The first highlight wants to be quite a thick line and this is going to help soften and bring out the next highlight we do. It's also going to help with defining the shape of the panels some more. Go around all the panel edges and I'm almost using the side of my brush for this highlight to get the thickness I'm after. If you make any mistakes, it's not a massive problem. You can just use some McCrag Blue to neaten up those lines. I'm now going to show you how to do a fine highlight. I'm using Calgar Blue and this highlight is going to bring out all those sharp edges making them easier to see. For a lot of the highlights, you can use the edge of your brush and run it along the edge to create the highlight, making it a lot easier. For the areas you can't do this, just take your time and paint a thin line along those details to create the highlight. This is probably the trickiest and most time consuming part of painting a space marine. It just takes some practice and the more you do, the better your hand-eye coordination will get. I'm now going to finish off the highlights with a spot highlight and I'm using Femrisian Grey for this. Using the same techniques I've already talked about, pick out some more of the prominent edges and corners of the armour. I like to think which edges would the light catch from directly above. You may have seen some marines painted with little scratches and marks in their armour. This is pretty easy to achieve. Just go around the armour with the tip of your brush painting little lines and spots in places. 
You don't need to do a lot and I find when you're doing this, it's better to have almost no paint on your brush, kind of like dry brushing. There's still plenty to show you so don't go anywhere because I'm now going to show you how to paint all the metallic details in the marine. Starting with the silver details I use iron hand steel making sure to get a nice solid colour first. I then give these areas a wash of null oil and wait for that to dry. Layer back up with iron hand steel and finish the silver details with the Stormhost silver highlight. For any details you want to be gold start with some Retributorama and then layer up with some Liberator gold. After that, create a wash using an equal amount of Reutkland Flesh Shade and Reutkland Flesh Shade Gloss and use this on the gold details making sure to let this dry before using Liberated Gold again to highlight. I'm now going to show you how to paint any details you want to be black like bolt gun casings and joints between the armour. To paint these details start with some Abaddon Black then paint a chunky highlight using Eshin Grey and finish up with a fine highlight using Dawnstone. If there are any pouches about you want to paint a brown leather, I would start with a base of Mornfang Brown, always making sure to get a nice solid colour to work from. You want to give these areas a wash using Norn Oil. Then using Mornfang Brown again, lay back up leaving some darker areas to create some interest. Paint a chunky highlight with Scrag Brown and a fine highlight with Baylor Brown. Now you may find some purity seals on your marine so I want to make sure you can paint those as well. Paint the parchment first of all using more gas bone and the wax seal with pink horror. Lay the parchment with your shabti bone next. You can paint this sideways to help give some texture to it. Give the purity seal a wash of Reichlin flesh shade next. Then highlight the parchment with screaming skull and the wax seal with Empress children. And if you want to make the parchment look like it has something written on you can use some thin down of bad and black. Use the tip of your brush and take your time painting little squiggly lines on the parchment. Don't worry, I haven't forgotten about the lenses. I always seem to leave these until the end because I feel like the miniature comes alive after I've painted them. Start with some Mephiston Red. Then paint a thin line of Fire Dragon Bright on the bottom of each lens. And finally finish off with a small dot of white scar in the top red corner of each of the lenses. The Ultramarine is now finished and I hope you can go away and paint an Ultramarine the way you've always wanted to. If you want to know how I did the transfers go and check out my transfers tutorial where I show you. Thank you very much for watching, if you enjoyed this video make sure to leave a like and let me know in the comments below. Subscribe so you don't miss out on future tutorials and I'll see you in the next video.